In today's session of Visual J Forex, we will be continuing our work using the indicator stochastic first. In uh, this session, I will be trying to explain to you how we can design and develop the algorithm using this indicator. And in uh, today's part, the focus is going to be on completing the buy side of the equation. So we will see how to design and define the algorithm using this uh, Visual J Forex board which has been developed by the Dracoscopy Bank SA. In the last session, I had uh, carried out the instrument subscription. The default instrument is being matched with the instrument of choice, which is the Euro USD. Position amount was defined at zero. I also have taken these uh, stochastic fast indicator blocks. These two are of four hour time period and uh, another two are of 15 minutes each. Then, uh, to look at the price action, I have also added this gate historical candle block of the four hourly time period, and uh, another uh, one is of 15 minute candle period, and these two are of 10 seconds each. And on the lower side, this uh, calculation was done to define the value which we will compare with the actual difference of high and low, it has uh, 30 pips as the criteria so we will need the last four hourly candles high and low to be more than 30 pips apart and uh, that is going to help us in making sure that we are getting involved in the trade only when there is enough of volatility there is momentum in the price action and uh, we will be staying away from the trading when there is uh, no not much volatility so that's the purpose behind adding this uh, condition. Now to give you a refresher behind the logic of the execution of the trade, I will uh, use this uh, Euro USD chart. This is the four hourly time period chart. And uh, as I had explained to you, the logic behind the execution of the trade in yesterday's session, the setup is fairly simple. All we need to do is to make sure that uh, we have the stochastic fast indicator giving us the idea or you can say a favorable uh, outlook on the price action whenever we have the fast percent k value trading above the fast percent d value in the current four hourly candle period we will be looking to initiate the trade provided in the last four hours in the for a, a stochastic indicator block we had the stochastic fast output values the fast percent k below 20 and fast percent d also below 20 but the fast percent k was uh, higher than the fast percent d so that will be the case where we will uh, be looking to initiate the trade when we have seen that the underlying instrument has spent considerable time in the oversold scenario, oversold territory. And uh, now these are the initial hours where the possibility of a move on the high side is emerging and uh, we want to get involved only in the initial uh, hours. That's why I have kept the output value for the last four hours, fast percent K and fast percent D. In the current hour, in the current candle, we will not cap the output on the higher side, but the only condition will be that the fast percent K should be above fast percent D, and uh, that will confirm to us the continuation of the bullish momentum in the current uh, four hourly time period. And uh, once we are satisfied with the four hourly condition, we will turn our attention to the 15 minutes time period, and uh, here. The trade will be initiated as and when we have the bullish crossover. In last 15 minutes, the stochastic fast should uh, show a crossover. That means the fast percent K value has risen above fast percent D value. Whereas in the penultimate uh, 15 minute period, the fast percent K value was below the fast percent D value. In addition of that, we also have to anchor these uh, output values for the stochastic fast. On the lower side, we don't really want to get involved after uh, the price has run higher and uh, to avoid that kind of scenario. The last uh, 
not last the penalty met uh, 15 minute candles output value will be capped we will need its uh, first percent k value to be below 30 and um, as i said its uh, first percent k should have been first below first percent d and uh, we will also have to check the first percent d output and uh, first percent d output should also have remained uh, below 30 and only in the last 15 minutes we have seen turnaround of sort it has picked up momentum and as in when that happens we want to initiate the buy trade so that's the logic behind this uh, setup and uh, quite simple one at that so now let us head back to the visual j forex board we have these uh, blocks in place now all we need to do is uh, carry out one more calculation consider the actual uh, difference between the high and low for last 15 minutes uh, not 15 minutes last four hourly candle we will have to consider the candle 17 candle high and candle low A1 minus A2 Okay After this, I will bring in the multiple action block, logical component. For the time being, we can join it. If we need to add uh, further blocks, this can be disconnected and uh, connected later on whenever requirement arises. Now, using the if blocks, we will start checking the conditions for uh, the execution of the trade. Here, this block has the shift value of zero. That means this is the current uh, four hour the candle and it has not really closed. It's ongoing. Whereas this candle, the first percent uh, K14 and first D14. These are the values for the, the four hourly candle which has already closed. And first we will consider the last uh, four hourly candles values. And uh, we need the first percent K which is first K14 to be above first d14 so first input needs to be greater than second input but this uh, first percent k needs to be below 20 so its output will be kept on the higher side first input less than second input after that, we will consider the current first person K and first person D. And in this case, we will need first K10 to be above first D10. And also we will need the current values to be above 
the last for our candle values so we have to compare this fast k10 with fast k14 and fast d10 with fast d14 and in both the cases first input should be greater than second input first input greater than second input okay so we have defined these uh, conditions which are uh, dependent on the output for stochastic fast on the 4 hour later time period now we will uh, shift our attention to the 15 minutes time horizon and uh, here we are uh, using the crossover structure so we need fast k15 to be above fast d15 as uh, this is the stochastic fast indicator with shift value of 1 which means it is a uh, last 15 minute uh, 15 minutes output for stochastic and uh, stochastic fast k15 should have been above fast d15 first input greater than second input and uh, in this case of uh, fast k 16 and fast d16 we will need to invert the condition in the penultimate 15 minute candle the fast k16 should have been below fast d16 first input less than second input Sixteen less than fast D sixteen. Okay. And uh, as I explained to you, we also have to cap the output value and uh, to anchor it on the lower side. We will also need the penultimate 15 minutes candles fast uh, k and fast d values to be below 30 and since we need uh, fast percent k value to be below fast percent d value i think even if we simply say that fast d16 should have been below 30 that will automatically mean fast k16 was also below 30 okay So here, fast D16 value will need to be compared to 30. With this, we have defined the crossover setup for 15 minutes. Now, shifting our attention to the price action. Candle 17 is high and low difference needs to be greater than this predefined difference. So in this case, once we are uh, satisfied with the uh, stochastic conditions, stochastic fast conditions, we have to check for the volatility and uh, first input less than second input. After that, the actual price difference. will have to be compared with minimum price difference and uh, in this case first input should be greater than second input okay so 
these are uh, all the conditions which need to be fulfilled for the execution of the trade and after that all we have to do is uh, go for the execution of the trade as soon as we see the price start price starts to rise above the last 15 minute candle close so here we will compare the candle 18's close with the candle 19's and candle 20's closing values candle 19 has a look back period of 1 whereas candle 20 has a look back period of 2 we will have to make sure that the candle 20 is close was below the candle 18's close and after that the candle 19's close was above candle 18's close so i will take candle 18's close in both these blocks And uh, first we will consider the candle 20. It should have been less, so first input less than second input. And uh, after that, the last 10 second candle closed higher. So first input greater than second input. And uh, now we are free to bring in the order block. Trading. Open at market. As soon as conditions get fulfilled, we will be going for a market open. First input greater than second input. Coming to this uh, trade command block, we have to define these five parameters depending on which we will have the output value and before we do that let us just arrange these blocks and it will not take much time once we arrange this it becomes a lot easier to understand and also it looks better than uh, the clutter which we are currently seeing And this will need to be connected here. And I will also color code this. And let us check the trade command block. Okay, it is going all the way through till this uh, trade command block. Default instrument will remain as it is. Trade amount I will change to 0 0.1 million. The page will also be changed to 2 gigs. 2 gigs is I think good enough. Stop loss uh, and the take profit. This is a tricky part and uh, depending on your preference you can define it either in a static manner or in a dynamic manner. For this session 
again we are uh, sticking to the static uh, rises static hard coded parameters and uh, I think given we are using the combination of 15 minutes and uh, 4 hours a uh, combination of 15 uh, pips as the stop loss and 30 pips as the target price should be good enough so we will really relying on this combination which will get us the risk reward ratio 1 is to 2 And another way to define the stop loss and take profit is to look at the actual price action and depending on that you can keep it dynamic by taking a predefined or a predetermined or predefined values like last hourly closing and opening difference or high low difference or whichever parameter suits your need and you can then define accordingly. So in this session, I will be stopping here. I hope you have been able to understand the logical as well as the execution part of this uh, setup. And uh, hopefully you will be trying it out on your own. And uh, one part remains, we have to define the cell side equation. And uh, that will be done in the next session. So this is all for today. Thank you all for joining in. Do subscribe to the Rikoscopy webinar channel. See you next time. Till then, goodbye.